Hey everyone, Brady from Texture Labs here working in Photoshop today, and we're gonna take a look at one tool. Very powerful tool that I think goes a little bit under the radar in the program, but it's gonna help to answer one of the ultimate Photoshop questions that asks, how can we create hyper detailed, convincing looking illustrative effects in Photoshop without really having to illustrate anything? And I think the answer lies in getting this tool set up properly and getting a sense of how to get the best out of it. What am I talking about? It's the smudge tool. Let's get into Photoshop and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, we're here in Photoshop and we are looking at the smudge tool. This is the smudge tool at its default settings. It doesn't seem particularly useful. It's really just kind of smearing everything around. And if you turn down the strength on this tool, it just makes the smudge a shorter distance, but it doesn't really help too much. So what I found with this tool is that it does need to be customized a little bit beyond just adjusting the strength. And this works just like a paintbrush tool. So you have all these regular brush options. And specifically, it's the brush tip that you use with this tool that really makes a huge difference. So I'm gonna switch over to a custom smudge brush and I'll show you what this brush is made of. It's actually pretty simple, but check out how much different that looks. You can actually see how we might be able to use this to create some kind of pencil or pastel sketch effects. So what I found with these brushes is that if we use a brush tip that has lots of negative space in it, so this is the brush tip that I'm using, and it's pretty simple, but as we drag this brush across, we're gonna get some areas that get smudged a lot, like little pencil streaks, and then it's also gonna kinda of leave other parts alone. So as I scribble around, we get these new little sketch marks being introduced to the image. I'll include a link for you guys to download this brush preset. It's pretty straightforward, that's the brush tip shape, and then I've added a few options in here in shape dynamics. I've got a little bit of size jitter, and that's gonna make the brush appear just a little bit rough, and I also have the angle jitter control set to direction. And what that does is make the brush follow the direction of whatever line you're drawing. It's a subtle difference, but I'm not using a tablet or anything. I'm just using the mouse to scribble around here. And the brush kind of follows the lines that I'm making. So I'm gonna undo a few steps and I'll show you how I put this to use. And it really is just as simple as starting to scribble onto this image. And that might be a little bit of an oversimplification because this is where just a tiny bit of, I wouldn't even call it drawing skill, but at least a little bit of artistic sensibilities come into play. You can see that I'm not just scribbling randomly, but instead I'm just loosely trying to follow the contours of the different shapes or blocks of color here, kind of moving the brush down and around the details on the nose things like that and I'm not being too precious about it but just trying to be aware of the direction that I'm scribbling and I'm doing that for two reasons number one I do need to be careful not to just smudge everything together we obviously want to retain the basic contours and details in the image and the second reason is that as we slowly move across the image and kind of give it this treatment we're also starting to create this whole extra layer of information that wasn't there to begin with like the directions of these little lines as subtle as they are they start to convey something about the shapes of these surfaces. A lot like how in a, in a really detailed engraving you get this line work that simultaneously creates the shading but also gives you a sense of the shape of a face. Now that's something that you can approximate with filters or patterns and I've definitely done that in a few videos but there's something about just going across the entire image and choosing these contours by hand that just can't be substituted. And I think as a viewer that's part of what makes it interesting to look at but it's kind of cool. We're kind of replacing the fine details details of pores or maybe even just noise and grain and JPEG artifacts in an image. We're eliminating all those fine details and replacing them with these sketch details. And even though they are subtle, they start to add up and, and create a certain really cool aesthetic. And I kind of like about this process that it doesn't take too long, but it's also not instant. There does seem to be, however, like an instant moment where the illustrated look kind of takes over the photographic look and you can really start to see it. All right, let's skip forward a little bit and see what this image looks like if I just keep at it and kind of cover the whole thing. And there we go. I think it's a really cool effect. Now, obviously working with the smudge tool has kind of changed the texture and the character of the image, but it hasn't manipulated the overall color, the overall values or shapes. So when you're working with the smudge tool in this way, it's not a magic bullet that's gonna take a bad photograph and make it into a movie poster. But I think what's cool is that it can break your Photoshop process into components. And what I mean is that, for example, if we're working with a photograph that's maybe a little bit more straightforward, I could do some experimenting with regular photos 
Photoshop adjustments and try to exaggerate the values quite a bit. Maybe try something a little over the top with the color. And once the image feels a little bit more extreme in one way or another, then I'll get into smudging it all together kind of converting it into this illustrative look. So I'm just using the same brush preset. The only thing I might do along the way is just change the size of the brush. If there's an area where I need to be a little more attentive to the details and not mush things together, I can just use the open and close bracket keys to size the brush up and down. And then maybe there are some areas where I don't mind if things get a little bit more gestural, a little heavier on the pencil marks, then I can use a bigger brush and let the effect be a little bit heavier. But if we zip ahead here, over the course of about eight minutes, we're going from here to here. All right, one more example, because the smudge tool, of course, doesn't need to be used on a single photograph. You can use it to treat a whole composition. So I've got a project here with a couple of layers, just some basic rough Photoshop work, but I like the colors. I like the way these elements fit together. So what I'll do is create a merged copy on a new layer using that crazy shortcut command option shift E. And then I'm just going through with the smudge tool, following the contours of the image and just making those small creative judgments along the way of what direction I want to blend things. And it takes a little bit of time, but I really enjoy this process, seeing how the different elements like this twisty phone cord start to take on a new character when you bring in this extra level of detail. This one took a little while to do. So what we're looking at now is over the course of about 20 minutes, but slowly but surely the whole thing starts to come together. All those photographic details are getting replaced and the image takes on kind of a new character. So that is the finished image. And then we could take this, add a little bit of typography, a little bit of texture, and we've got a pretty decent 80s thriller movie poster. All right, well, that's it for now. Like I mentioned, you can download the Smudge Brush preset for free. I will link to that below. Hope you guys enjoy experimenting with this. Always more from the Texture Labs channel on the way, so if you're not already subscribed, be sure to do that. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.